we are still in the year, the Hebrew year of uh, 5783 to 023, Pei Gimel, or Pei Gimel. And we are actually coming very near in September to a new year, which is 5784. And uh, very interesting for those of you who have been following uh, the Hebrew alphabets, that will be Dalet, all right? Pei Dalet, Dalet. And even if that, that will be in September, that means a few months more. And a lot already started to talk to me about Dalet. <clears throat> and very exciting, <laughs> because if you all remember what is Dalet, it's, we'll, we'll be sharing very soon, okay? As we head towards there, okay? So Gimel is walking, running, all right? Um, as we declare, God's promises over our lives, and it's a journey that we are all heading forward. So when you go into Dalet, you will know how exciting is this journey, all right? So today is walking in God's divine providence and destiny. Whoa. <laughs> we all want today as God's people to walk this journey following His divine providence and his destiny for our lives my heart for you all is that each one of you fulfill god's given destiny all right purpose for your lives while on this earth so <clears throat> what is this about so to, we, uh, today there will be a little bit of uh, teaching on doctrine all right so use your god-given intelligence a bit okay so nothing is wrong with our soul though we speak from our heart sometimes you need to use our brains okay right to understand certain things so don't just uh, everything heart, heart, heart. that's good we love from the heart but we need to understand using god's capabilities that he has given us from our uh, soul area okay so today a little bit here but very exciting Okay, so what is the meaning? Okay, we're going to walk in providence, right? So we need to know some of the big words here, what it means, right? Very important to know meaning of words because our whole life is about God's word, God speaking to us, right? Whether we learn it, we understand it in Chinese, Bahasa or any language, we need to understand, okay? What we are hearing or reading, especially when it is spoken by God. Okay, otherwise we cannot move in our life. The word providence be, combines the prefix okay. pro with the Latin word video becoming pro video. So that's where your the video <laughs> come from, right? We're all familiar with videos, all right? While some scholars include the word foresight in its definition, the word providence has a wider scope than the foreknowledge of God. So many scholars will talk about providence interpreted as God's foreknowledge, all right, of how he provides. But looking into the meaning, it means provideo. Okay, so what does that mean? Foresight. Video is what you can see. Pro video breaks down into pro, meaning on behalf of, and video, meaning to see. Okay, so uh, Bible teacher John Piper. Okay, all these names are people who have studied and they are Bible scholars, Bible teachers. So sometimes we just, I just quote from them and many people just quote from them. They are Bible commenta com commentaries that are from these people who have studied, all right, the different languages. Uh, original languages. Okay. The Bible teacher John Piper says provideo means to see. Okay. I think don't need this, right? This is blocking a bit. Don't need this one, right? This one? Ah, for now, no need. Okay. <clears throat> means to see to something. Ah, does it ring a bell? And supply what is needed, much like the word provision. So, you all remember anything? To see, do something, and supply what is needed, much like the word 
provision. In other words, Piper says, seeing something with a purpose is to make provision for what you see. Before we go, anyone remember? Huh? Ah, Jehovah? Jireh, right? God will see to it and therefore he will provide. So the first one is he has provided what he will see to it that the lamb will be provided. And following there, whatever promise that we declare and believe, God will see to it that he will provide that which we are believing for or trusting him for. Okay, so that's provision. So the word provision comes from this one. Provid providence is the act of God seeing to the universe. Okay, so first God sees and then God provides. Okay, let's learn a little bit more here. The Christian worldview acknowledges God's intimate involvement in the affairs of every person and nation and throughout nature. So generally, Christians believe that or acknowledge that God is involved in the affairs of every person. Correct? This is a general view of Christians, that God is, is involved. Okay? And Wyatt Graham, another uh, scholar, wrote, God acts through his providence to minister goodness to a world gone awry. These are very uh, revelatory statements. Okay, God acts through his providence to minister because he is a God of providence. His actions, right? what he does is to minister goodness all right because the world have gone <laughs> ori means gone haywire through adam's sin isn't it okay so his world is not left to random chance or fate so this world said lucky ah <laughs> right in all religion oh, so lucky ah fate ah that means it so happened luck by luck by chance right when we do gambling or whatever is by luck so you, you didn't calculate right it's luck something that so happened come to you good luck then something bad happened to you we call bad luck <laughs> okay so now this is not what christians believe or what the bible say god is not a god of luck that means by chance right it's all not all another word is coincidence the world uses right so we are you here by coincidence are you born here by luck or by chance and then your whole life bad luck <laughs> born into the wrong family they're all bad luck born into the rich family good luck this is not what the bible teaches us all right or what god god so this world as far as God is concerned, it's not happening by luck, right? Because of bad luck, you got a disease. Because of bad luck, you lost the job. No, like that, right? That means every detail of our life is under the control of our God, all right? God is the master controller of the universe. For us to walk in the divine providence and destiny, we need to understand this, all right? God is a master controller of the universe, not the devil. Although he's the small g on least temporary because of Adam handing over the rulership of this world to him when he disobeyed God, he is not in control. The devil is not in control of this universe. He just had temporary rulership and only over those who unbelievers. Okay, over believers, you already cut off, okay, from the devil rulership. All right, once we understand that, then we are under the new rulership of Jesus Christ. So we will live our lives according to what our new king says. So we sang the song, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, means we listen to the new king instruction and the power of the old king has been removed and totally destroyed all right <clears throat> so see this 
in God is the master controller of the universe, or as a Bible teacher, Nancy Demos Move likes to say, heaven rules. Okay, so uh, as a uh, integrity, right, of all these scholars, whenever we quote someone, if we know the name of the person, we give back the credit to that person. That's how integrity is. In eternity past, by the counsel of his own will, God ordained all things. That means he already determined all things. So many people have this question of predetermination and all these things. Okay, so we have a little bit understanding understanding of this this morning. Yes, this does not mean he is the author of sin. Human responsibility is always in effect. So throughout all the teaching of spirit man development, you understand that God is not the author of sin. All right? How did sin come in? Through the free will, free choice of Adam, God's under ruler. God's intention was for Adam to rule this world from his perspective, all right? But Adam chose to disobey God. So last week, we learned about Toth, all right? God made man free choice and took a risk <laughs> because that free choice, if he chooses to disobey God, you will not no more be in harmony or agreeable to God's purpose. You will not be fit for the purpose that God created him for. So God created Adam to rule as God. That's why later on, Israel became that nation who were to rule as God. And the new creation today are to rule as God yeah, on this earth because of Jesus Christ. So in eternity past, by the counsel of his own will, God ordained all things. Yet this does not mean he's the author of sin. All right, so, but he came and assumed that responsibility for man's sin or that liability through Jesus Christ coming down, the Son of God, taking our place of punishment. So God also created laws of nature, cause and effect, and every human is fully responsible for choices and sins, right? That's why we, we, we learn about Ancient of Days, there's a day that God will stand as judge for those unbelievers right the judgment uh, the great white throne judgment where god who has lived from eternity ancient of days the, the aged one will be judging the world the people all right so without christ or they don't believe in christ they will be sentenced to hell including the devil into the lake of fire so Man is res fully responsible. And why God is fair and just to sentence someone to death or to hell? <laughs> Have you ever witnessed to anyone and they say, how can a good God send someone who didn't kill anybody <laughs> who didn't steal who didn't really commit any big sins is it fair of this good god to send someone to hell we all didn't witness enough <laughs> so never encountered or you may have thought it yourself once upon a time why god want to send me to hell i didn't commit murder how are you going to answer? They all said, talk to Pastor Deborah. <laughs> God is fair and just, and he has, in his justice and fairness, he can send someone to hell. Why? <laughs> because he already assumed that responsibility, it is not by what we did wrong. It is not by your sin that he sent you to hell. It's not because you sin. Why are you sent to hell? <laughs> yes, John 3, 16, 17, 18 onwards, right? The one who does not 
believe or receive God's gift of salvation just by simply believing is already condemned. So he is very fair because he's not punishing you for your sin, right? He sentenced someone because they didn't accept God's way of saving man. So there is nothing, case is closed, right? I already, yes, you sin, but I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to take that punishment for your sin, which is the punishment ultimately to end up in hell. So now it's for you to accept this, this sacrifice or not. And if you do, on behalf on, on, on uh, because of Jesus, now you can escape hell and go into eternal heaven. Yeah? So are you clearer now? <laughs> Okay, don't say, oh, sit there and then refer to pastor. <laughs> okay, clear? Anyone not clear still? Hannah, are you clear? <laughs> okay, I did make it clear, right? Otherwise, inside your heart, you will still cannot see God as the fair God and the just God and what happens when we don't see God as who He is, fair and just and sovereign? It, we will not trust Him. There will be areas in our lives we won't trust what God say because deep inside we feel God is not fair. Okay? And God will never be uh, termed as not fair. Alright? So that's why Jesus came. That means... Hannah, God, you did wrong, you killed someone or you sinned and you are supposed to pay the punishment for that sin. Okay? Death. And the judge sentenced you to death. Is that fair? Yes, because according to the law, you have sinned and the law said, whoever sinned must die. Okay, now, instead of sentencing you to death, someone else take your place to go and take that punishment of sin that you committed. That person didn't commit. It could be the judge himself. Come down and say, you no need to die. But you deserve to die. Okay, so now, if you accept my gift, where I take your place, then you go free. Okay? So if you don't want to accept that gift that is offered to you, you go die. Oh? <laughs> as simple as that. Right? So whoever do not accept the free gift of God, they means they want to pay for their own sin, then go to hell. Oh? You understand? Right? So you cannot blame God, right? God said, I already give you the way out. You don't want. So it's fair and just for God to follow his universal law of the wages of sin is death. That's why Jesus took that already and offered it to you. Up to you to accept or reject. And you're going to hell or heaven based on whether you accept or reject that offer of the judge or whoever to you to go free. Understand? Clear now? <laughs> okay, no need to digest, right? It's very simple. Okay, yeah. So, God is the one who created all the laws, and every human is fully responsible for choices. But God is so good. Am I right? We should be punished. That's the meaning of grace. All of us deserve to go to hell, to die. Yeah. But God is active in both willing and working of his creatures to bring his purpose, purposeful plans to fulfillment or completion. So in God's love, he gave us a way out through Jesus Christ. All right? Taking the punishment on your behalf. Clear, right, Ru? Okay, good. <clears throat> Is God's providence the same as God's sovereignty? 
Okay, so there's another big word here that we always sing. You are the sovereign God. <laughs> what does that mean? Is it the same two words? Always remember why there are so many words or you call synonyms, synonyms in English. If there is a different word, that means that it's a slightly different meaning. Yeah, so don't just say everything is the same. Okay, <laughs> has some difference in meaning. Okay, so providence, God's providence and God's sovereignty. The actual word providence is not a word found in the English Bible, except that we have the word provide. But the scriptures reference God's way, ordinance, God's way of doing things. All right, ordinance, hand, upholding, working, government, care and deeds, all legitimate substitutes for that word. So we see the word providence in all these words that are mentioned in the, in where? Yeah, okay. Sometimes I'm a bit worried when they all look so blank. <laughs> okay, so it's mentioned in the Bible, both words, providence or the meaning of providence and sovereignty. But they are not exactly the same, all right? Though they seem to overlap, God's sovereignty and providence are not exactly the same thing. God's sovereignty is his right and power to do all that he decides to do. So we have been learning about all the names of God, who God is, right? And one of the things is he is the sovereign God. I am that I am. He can do what he decides to do. Okay, And we can see that in Job, Job 42 verse 1 to 3. I put it in the NLT. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and that no one can stop you. So remember Job's life, right? So they were, well, he, he, at first he was very blessed as, as in financially, wealth and everything. And then something happened. The devil wanted to test, right? Uh, or rather challenge God that, okay, while you are blessing him, of course, lah, Job will praise you, will bless you. What if you, you take that hand of protection out from Job? Will he still praise you? <laughs> oh, right? And then God said, okay, that's for Job's case. And that, oh, you can touch all the things that belong to him except his life. Cannot take. Okay, God is still sovereign. So throughout the Job 42 is the last chapter of the story of Job. How many chapters? 42. <laughs> so from, four, from 1 to 41, 41 chapters of his life, it were all about questioning, uh, the, you know, God did this to you, blah, 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 trying to reason out and figure out whether God is fair, God is just, and so forth. And the last chapter of arguing with God, including his three advisors. That's why we need to be very careful who you go for counsel. <laughs> the three counselors that uh, Job had gave him wrong counsel. <laughs> okay, you can read for yourself. Until finally, in chapter 42, the last chapter, Job replied to the Lord. He surrendered. <laughs> White flag. And then he said, I know. That you, who is that God, the sovereign God, can do anything. No one can stop you. You ask, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? He's, we are just very foolish human beings. Right? Trying to question God. You know? And God at the end said, uh, Job surrendered and said, I am ignorant. <laughs> so many people are smart aleck in this world, right? They think they know everything, they know about God and so forth from their own thinking. All right? And finally, because God is sovereign, He's master and controller, He will let things happen into your life until you surrender <laughs> and say, I know nothing, uh, God. I know nothing. Sometimes we think we know a lot. Come before God. And he says, Job says, I'm ignorant. What I say is coming out from ignorance. It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. That's why before we talk. <laughs> uh, all right. Just <clears throat> see, is it really in line with God's word? 
think a bit. Otherwise, we will just bring out our foolishness, <laughs> right? I've been learning, right, in Corinthians. Okay, so many people actually talk as if they know everything, right? But then, no. Who is the one who knows everything? God, Jehovah, El, 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 <laughs> El Dia, right? The God of all knowledge, right? He knows all things. Okay, and John Piper, this Bible teacher, wrote, but not, notice that nothing in that definition of sovereignty refers to God's wisdom or plans. When he decides to do a thing, he does it, and no one can stop him. That's sovereignty. That means he is the ultimate ruler. Whatever he king, right? Whatever he say he want to do, he can do. No one can stop. Correct? Okay. Then what is providence? So God will accomplish in sovereignty. He, he accomplish what he intends to do. Remember the things I've done in the past. Okay, another scripture. There are plenty. Some only bring, I bring out a few. Remember the things I've done in the past. I alone am God. I alone am God. This world made of many uh, smart Alex say there are many other gods. <laughs> Correct? All the smart Alex. Right? Uh, that's why religion came out. Okay? And that's actually all a deception of the devil, but people uh, just believe it. And very clear when we find the Bible, the truth, God say there is no other. Okay? That means we listen to the sovereign one. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am. The, the means the only one. Okay? Don't get sucked into the world of a uh, devil's deception. Other way also can reach God, ma. Other way also can go heaven, ma. Other way, other way. And we all say, Christians say, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <Huh>? Who say? <laughs> so, at least for ourselves, once we know, then you will be able to walk in the divine purpose, providence of God. If you yourself also not too sure, it's Jesus Christ, the only God, then how are we going to walk in his in the destiny that he has set for us? Because we are still not sure. Remember what did uh, James say in the book of James? The one who is double-minded is unstable in all his ways because in our whole life there's a journey which way you want to take left or right left is jesus right is <laughs> another way okay so once we know there is one way we follow that way to the destination that god has already prepared in his sovereignty for his children so he says i alone am god I am God and there is none like me. That's why sometimes we sing songs and then we don't believe what we are, the lyrics inside, right? You're none like you. And then we go outside there. Really or not? Huh? <laughs> Jesus is really the only way or not. Right? So look at the word of God to be more clear. Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. And we have yeah, now you all know how I think already, okay? <laughs> okay, I teach. Right? Even Christians try to look for their future in uh, astrology or whatever, or, or G, and then that means we don't believe that only God can tell our future. We try to find other ways, fortune tellers, medium, because everyone was created with this curiosity about their future. Why? Because we are? Why? Why do you have a curiosity about your future? Have you ever been curious? Who will you marry? The song says what? <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, right? <laughs> Who will I marry? How many children will I have? How, how many houses will I have? Everyone curious, right? Why? About the future. Why? He, does man have this curiosity inside them to want to know the future? That's why I'm not the mediums. All or no, I cannot make money. The, the fortune tellers cannot make money, right? 
But because of human being who wants to know their future, these people got a job. <laughs> but they are not. The Bible is very clear about all these uh, fortune tellers and all that, not of God. It's super clear. So, but the thing I want to ask you all is, why do you think that inside your heart, you have this something inside you that wants to know the future? <laughs> Anyone else? So, uh, Elijah say want to know a good ending. Are you sure? Uh, and, okay, what about his creation? Uh, you are a spirit being. You are an eternal spirit being. Even someone who has not received the Lord was created a spirit being that will live forever. Future is about time, right? That we have not lived yet. But because you are created a spirit being like God, this spirit being wants to know what is in the future, what is in eternity. It's just normal. The cat, your cat, not interested to go and see the medium, right? What will my ending be? I am a cat. <laughs> right? Because they have no spirit. They only have a soul. But human beings are created, beings were created with spirit in the image of God. So that was something inside your spirit man that searches, okay, why you are on this earth? Why are you living here? And what is going to happen in the future? It's very natural. That is your character of the a spirit, eternal spirit. That's why we learn about El Olam, ancient of days. You will not annihilate after you a, a man die at 60, 70, 30, physical death. That's why we know there is a life after death, which will live forever. So if we live our life like everyone else, only for the number of years we live on this earth, we have failed to see that we are eternal spirits born on this earth for a purpose and a destiny. Esther, Tan, Tan, right? Yeah, born for such a time as this. Then when we finish our walk and journey and life on this earth, we will graduate to live forever in heaven, in eternity. That's why I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him but, oh, so you all didn't get the meaning of eternal. <laughs> if a believer just live carelessly, that means they don't realize what is eternal life all about. Okay? Eternity, forever and ever and ever. Hmm? You shall not perish. So God says, I am the only one who can tell you the future before it happens. All right? The the little things on this earth is not the main important thing, but the spiritual, God's intentions and plans for us. And last week, I shared the verse, Jeremiah 29, 1, right, which Elijah wants to know the good ending. The Bible already tell you your ending, good or bad. <laughs> okay, so now it's the walking, all right? The wisdom of God to walk towards that good ending. Okay, for everyone who is a believer, it is a good ending. All right, but talking about uh, rewards and all that, whether we want those eternal rewards or we just get into heaven by the skin of our teeth, right? <laughs> okay, so everything I plan will come to pass for I do whatever I wish. So don't waste time arguing with God. <laughs> You're really wasting time. God, why this? Why that? He says, he's a sovereign God. Whatever I plan, do you think you know? We know the future, we don't know, but he knows, right? And he already tell us it's good. So don't argue with God. Oh, this one you tell me to do, whether it can work or not. Uh, so if he tells you, then he is the one who will bring it to pass. Okay? It's just, we just walk along with his plan and purpose. Okay? 
he do whatever he wish. No need to question God or argue with him, especially his word. Yeah? Providence, however, includes that what sovereignty doesn't, Piper said. One might say that providence is wise, purposeful sovereignty. So providence is, he is sovereign, all right? God is above and controller and master. He can do whatever he, he can sentence me to go hell or any one of us. It's up to him because he is the sovereign God, right? He can kill us, move one finger and we fly to another planet. Also can, all right? But what is providence, right? Is he is wise and purposeful sovereignty. That means in his sovereignty of what he determines what he can do, what he wants to do, he has a purpose in that decision. Wise because he wants to do it for our, yes, for our benefit or for our good. So that's where providence come in, divine providence. You understand? Sovereignty, he can do whatever he wants. Providence, in the whatever he can do, in whatever he wants, he think about us. All right? He wants, he see us. He see the frailty of humanity. He see our weaknesses. He see we were lost. And in his sovereignty, he can also just send us all to hell. Finish the story. <laughs> we won't be here. Okay? But he's wise and he's loving. And he got purpose. So in that wisdom and purpose, he provided, he saw man's pathetic state and he provided Jesus Christ to come, the sacrificial lamb, to die for you and me. Can you see a little bit of difference between sovereignty and divine providence? Yeah? Okay. Regarding sovereignty, Jerry Bridges quoted Augustine, the sovereignty of God's providence. So he put together this, this uh, author or right or a teacher put both words together. Augustine said, Nothing therefore happens unless the omnipotent, the all powerful one, wills it to happen. He either permits it to happen or he brings it about himself. Okay? How does all this apply to our lives? Right? We live this life not realizing that there is someone in control. That's why people give up in their lives, right? Because they cannot see a sovereign God. Or they question, oh God, why you are sovereign, you are good, and then got sickness, got disease, got all kinds of things. So we all can answer that question already, right? <laughs> okay, if not, we will stay here until 3 o'clock. <laughs> if, okay, if you don't know, think about it, okay? So we know that now, because we have become sons and daughters of children of God, who of sovereign God, Nothing happens by chance or by luck. Okay? No, it's no coincidence. You don't believe in code, but we do believe that sometimes we can walk out of God's will. Alright? By our ignorance, we make wrong decisions that is not in line with God's will. Uh, okay, give me a second. The, the internet went off. Or maybe you can help me to get back. Yeah. <clears throat> so nothing happens unless omnipotent wills it to happen. This will help you walk your journey in this life, not blur blur, not scared, but with great confidence that anything that happens, God allows it, and it is for your good. Right? Even when we make wrong turn, that's why we have GPS. We calculate. <laughs> okay, those of you who drive, right? Why? So God is there. He is the one who already allow whatever happens because of the free choice that He gives to man. And the free choice, most of the time, leads us maybe the wrong track. Okay? And that's where He comes with His love and grace to recalculate and help you to walk back into the path. So some of you here, Right? God's grace brought you back to walk back in the path that He designed for you, in that destiny, that purpose. Okay? So He either permit it to happen or bring it upon Himself. Okay. Bridges elaborated, that means that nothing in your life is so small or trivial as to escape the attention of 
the, his sovereign control and nothing is so great as to be beyond his power to control it. So sometimes in our lives when we go through difficulties, what we always think, charm lord die. La. We never think that there's someone who is in control, who is sovereign, who can change the situation, who can change the government. In the natural, cannot change one. This government so powerful, blah, blah, blah. In the natural, according to five senses, right? This law cannot change one. This way cannot change. We are stuck in the human reason of everything cannot change one. <laughs> right? The only thing that cannot change, according to God's word, is God doesn't change. But he says anything on this earth can change. It's temporary. But why men cannot, didn't realize that? When we realize that, things will change in our lives, right, for the fulfillment of God's greater purpose. Okay? So, nothing in life will escape God's attention. So, even you do the small little thing, God is still loving you and seeing you and noticing you in that situation. So in Talia's, uh, where she is now, God knows, God sees, all right? And he has a purpose for you to go through that particular time because he wants to put you on your destination, on the road that he intended for you, okay? It's not too difficult for him. You see, nothing is so great to be beyond his power to control it. But our limited mind always feel, don't even realize <laughs> God can do. Remember the verse, he's able to do ah, Ephesians. Yes. So, as you meditate, what does that verse mean? It means that there is nothing beyond God's power to control it. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think that is outside the box. We all are limited to think within the box. That means within what we think, that's it. But God said, I am in control, the sovereign God. I can do beyond. So that is where if we see this and we continue to walk, understanding this, we will be walking the supernatural, living the supernatural life that Jesus lived. Jesus never think it's impossible for the money to come out from the fish. <laughs> Man will say, cannot, one no way can. Right? So many things, that's why we have the word called miracles. Right? Miracles happening in your life are because we realize God, your God, is sovereign in control if we just live within our five senses no miracle happen because all is our own effort what we can do what we cannot do or by natural logic reasoning you want to live in the realm that you were created the spirit man as god then we have to break out of the box okay but listen to our great shepherd the one i talked about yesterday okay so remember this he is nothing is beyond his power okay we might sense his providence in that statement the one whose eye is on the sparrow cares for us and here in the chapter of matthew chapter 6 about the caring uh, concerns of this world and the cares of this world it's very clear that people just live with your be within the five senses realm and what did Jesus say? Yeah, he trying to bring us up, to look up to the heavenly realm, to God's realm where you have, your God is, your father owns the whole universe. If he can take care of the sparrow, he can take care of you. So we need to break out from that box, okay? That he can take care of us and he wants because of the, he take care of the sparrow. Hmm? Okay, that is providence. God's divine providence. He can provide for you because he can provide for the sparrow. All right. <clears throat> Kevin DeYoung, another teacher, said the early reformed thinkers were exalted in God's design and decrees typically use the word providence. He wrote there is nothing. So if you go to Bible school, you will learn a lot of all these uh, teachings based on God's word. 
there is nothing wrong about celebrating divine sovereignty so long as we understand that God's inscrutable power, that means you cannot scrutinize, you cannot reason it out. Uh, we have to admit that we are not as smart as God. <laughs> okay, So long as we understand that God's inscrutable power is not exercised on a whim, but be always an expression of love for his people. You understand? Right? That means God in his sovereignty can do what he likes. But because of providence, he's a good God, right? He does what he likes with the aim and purpose of benefiting men. All right? His children. Okay? His love for us. His sovereignty is pro us. If God is for me, who can be against me? So when we do things in this world, we come into a living consciousness of God now in everything. So when we've come through challenges or problems, no, who is pro you? No, straight away go into the world of sense thinking. Cannot one lah. This, this thing is too strong for me. It's too big for me. The Goliath is too big. <laughs> this giant, right? We don't realize it. But we are walking this life as just normal human being when the normal Christian life should be the spiritual supernatural one where we begin to think outside the box but within God's word of his providence okay that he is able to do all things above what we ask or think so the part where we cannot do he can do okay when we trust in him and see his providence and sovereignty as Helbert catechism says all things come not by chance again all right but by his fatherly hand it's wonderful to live with this revelation throughout our lives all right <clears throat> What does scripture teach us about God's providence? The doctrine of God's providence or the providence of God is linked to the doctrine of his sovereignty over heaven and earth, the weather, the physical world, the affairs of nations, the human destiny is taught throughout scripture. Okay, so in the Bible, we can see all this, right? Where God is in control of the laws of nature and Jesus came and he exercised that authority where he said be still the storm even joshua right not yet born again can command the sun to stop hmm? because they know they are god's creation right god's they have the sovereignty understanding of sovereignty and the providence of god that god can do above and beyond okay so God uses human failures and successes to accomplish his will. Okay, so I will go uh, just a minute more. God uses human failures. So Luke chapter 1, verse 52, he brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. All throughout the Bible, we see how God is in control, right? But then when we come to our life, we don't see God is in control. <laughs> Very sad, right? So from the Bible, we are to see it's, he's consistent, God, all the way. He is the one who bring up someone and he put down someone. Okay, so when we read the Bible, read with that open eyes to see who is behind one ruler set up, right? Saul was the ruler and God put him down. God set him up, God put him down, right, for his own reasons, okay? So he is in charge. He can bring down princes who has human failures from their thrones and he can exalt the humble. Hmm. He provides protection for his people, preserves the animals and even controls the lion's mouth for good or to judge. So this is uh, statement comes from these verses. Psalms 4, 8. So you must know the word of God. All right, to live in absolute security and the supernatural i'm in peace i will lie down and sleep why for you alone not because sleeping pill keep me safe <laughs> you alone oh lord will keep me safe right all the creatures wait expectantly for you 
to give them their food as you determine. He is the provider. This is talking about the, the animals, all right? That actually, sometimes nobody feed them, right? Just now you told the story, right? There are people who go and feed those dogs and all, but there are some outside, that's why the sparrow and all the wild animals, who feeds them? God takes care of them, all right? Wait for you to give them the food as he had planned. Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth. See, why supernatural things happen? He knows his God. His God can shut the lion's mouth. Can you see this? Or you just see it as a fairy tale? <laughs> right? This is all the impossible things of this world. Challenges, persecution, whatever that will happen. If we don't see God in it, we will just succumb to the world's way of doing things. And we don't recognize as all these men and women or prophets of God, why they are so powerful. It's not they powerful. They believe in their God. They trust in their God. And they also trust in his sovereignty because they, most of them will say, okay, if we go into the lion's den, if it's God's will for us to die, we die off. If not, he will take us out. You have the Daniel and the three friends, right, in the fire. So today, you just compare, <laughs> not for condemnation, but you see where we have gone out of the men and women of God at those times. And many are still around, right? They believe they are God outside the box, okay? Because their whole life is already in God's hands. First, you need to see that our life is in God's hand. If he wants me to live 10 years more, I live 10 years more. If he wants to suffer for him, I will suffer for him. If he wants, he is my God, right? But if that doesn't get in, then we will live our life just normal like anybody else, as if we don't have a God. <laughs> yeah, a sovereign God, right? So Daniel said, God sent his angel. It's not, oh, Accidentally, the angel came <laughs> by luck. Lucky, oh, lucky got one angel appeared, oh, and shut the lion's mouth. He didn't say like that. But today we all say, lucky, oh, <laughs> lucky, oh, we didn't get that problem. We didn't get so forget about lucky anymore. We live under a sovereign God, all right, a God of providence that who is able to do some things, anything which we, our mind cannot even conceive or believe, right? For I have been found innocent. Okay, so this is what. God sustains, upholds, or bears up creation in his providence to declare his glory. So in the word of God, he already tells us, right? At the end is to declare the glory. We are his poetry to express the poet's intentions and love for this world. Okay, we do not write our own story. He writes our life story to express his love. So your life story is an expression of God's love for humanity, or rather should be, right? <clears throat> All creation is utterly dependent upon the Lord's sustenance. He preserves it all. If God were to say one day, just wipe off this hole, it's fed up with man already. <laughs> I won't be here. This is who our God is. Okay? <clears throat> it's not a feeling that today I feel that God is in control. Tomorrow I wake up, I don't feel God is in control. <laughs> All right? It's a, it's a knowing. That's why it's Jehovah El Dia. He know It's a knowing of who God is. And no one can change that all right even we believe or don't believe we cannot change god also right he is already who he is i am that i am all creation is dependent on him you alone nehemiah you alone are the lord see all his prophets all say the same thing <laughs> today's today's christians say what i'm not sure <laughs> are you in control right today we begin god will build up or raise up men and women all right prophets of god 
sons and daughters who will say what the Bible say, what these men and women of God say in the Bible. You alone are God. Okay? Not only for today, tomorrow, forever. You made the skies, the heavens and the stars. You made the earth, the seas and everything and preserved them all. The angels of heaven worship you. When a man or woman, each one of you here, recognize this, there is nothing that you won't do for the Lord. Right? Because you see him, what other people don't see. <clears throat> They all depend in Psalms 104 on you to give them food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. That is divine providence. Okay? God, in His goodness, He supplies. He takes care. You open your hand to feed them the calf, the open hand, and they are richly satisfied. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die. So this, the psalmist, and all of us who... Uh, living in this world, need to acknowledge this. But whether we acknowledge or not doesn't change who God is. He can live without us. <laughs> okay, but why not? You know, people say, be on the right side. You know, two gangs, right? You say, which side you want to be on? You better be on the more powerful side, right? It's really stupid to go and, you know, uh, join the other side who is less powerful. Our God is all powerful. Although situations may not look like perfect yet, but he said, he promised, he will change it because he has the power. All right. So this is our God. See, if God should choose to turn away from them, then they panic. Oh. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them breath, life is created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. Whether we believe or we don't believe won't change anything. Yeah, but it's better to believe, right? <laughs> we benefit, right? Yeah, why we so silly don't want to believe who this wonderful, great God is? He will complete His work in His children, guiding their every step. That is the divine providence, right? He's sovereign, but why? He loves us, divine providence. He will finish it and we can see it in a very famous verse, Romans 8.28. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for bad. Ah, you don't tell me you're not sure of your ending anymore, right? Okay, it's very clear. The Bible said, and last week we discovered the meaning of good in Hebrew. For harmony, again, I added in with his will. Now you are now fit for that purpose that he created you. He put in all the proper gadgets inside you your new nature everything for you to fulfill your destiny for we are his lovers he loves us we who have been called to do what fulfill his design purpose so you all got homework right <laughs> some of you okay so are you convinced are you 100 percent sure in other version romans 8 28 the normal King James Version is what? For all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Yeah, so this one is a version bringing out easier. All things, that means every detail of our lives, every stage of our life, okay, is actually all working together. That means God is the one in charge, sovereign of your life. So you think sometimes we reach a certain uh, time in our life where everything seems to not be working properly. That's what we term it as problems or challenges. But God said, all these things is working for, yeah, because we cannot see the future. <laughs> That's why we think we're going to die at this point already. No money, no, no health. But God says, Oh, you cannot see properly. I can see it is working. God has a purpose. So sometimes God has to deal with our character, you know, and all that to mold us and to be strong so that we can overcome by His strength. And there are many people that we are to help, okay, who cannot see. That's why they commit suicide. So there is a purpose. 
God allows things for a reason and both he and his plans are bad. <laughs> Cannot trust one lah, what God say. Huh? Are good. It says you work all things for good. Okay, put that clear inside our head. Both he and his plans are good. Kevin DeYoung wrote, he does not merely turn hard situations for our good. He ordains hard situations for our good. He allows and ordains sometimes difficult things in our life. If I didn't go through those difficult things, I wouldn't be able to show you God's will. Right? Yeah. I, I, I shared before, right, when I was in a student, Ta College, uh, already 19 years old, I, I prayed this prayer <laughs> because all the time I, want, I know my destiny is serving the Lord. So I said, okay, Lord, you just let anything happen to me <laughs> that I need for ministry. But I didn't know what on earth I was praying the whole world upside down. Actually, at that time I was thinking of failure in exam because I've never failed in exam before. I've always been a very uh, good student, right? In A class, got a lot of A's, blessed by the Lord, right? So that time when studying college, something happened and I failed. And I said, okay, Lord, if I need to learn what is failing exam like, I will accept it. But later on, I pass, you know? So I can understand someone who fail exam. <laughs> because if I always pass, how to understand someone who fail exam? But not necessarily you have to go through everything. Sickness especially is not of God to understand someone, okay? But that was my prayer. And of course, after that, my life turned upside down, okay? But then for a reason. <clears throat> okay. Tim Kelly takes this step further. Thank God for his providence and prepare to be amazed when, eter in, when in eternity God gives you the gift of seeing how often and to what extent he has kept you from sin. You understand this statement? <clears throat> we, always, we sometimes think that we are very good already. We seldom sin or... <clears throat> but one day in heaven, probably in eternity, God will show us how he actually kept us from sin or kept us from doing worse than we did. We don't know, right? Sometimes he's, he's there to protect, to help us, to keep us. We never saw before that God was there with you at that point of time, yeah? from committing bigger sins or worse or doing things that are you know, really terrible, although there's always a way back to God in His grace. But one day, our eyes will open. Yo, in that situation, God was there. <laughs> in that situation, uh, I could have killed a person, uh, but God was there and stopped it. Yeah, because if we can live with a scar for our whole life, yeah, killing someone. So, one day, you will see how wonderful His providence. He was always there providing we could have died of starvation but he was there calling the angels even we don't know him bring some food there yeah probably one day we might see that and continue to thank god for eternity how good he is to us through god's kindness is meant to bring people to repentance as a verse in romans that yeah the goodness of god brings one to repentance repentance doesn't mean you beat your heart and cry and cry right it means you change your mind when we think god is so hard why god so hard on me why my children like that why this why that repent means i stop thinking that way that god is hard god is cruel god is difficult but begin to think that start thinking god is good god has a plan and purpose for my life change the all thinking your mind that is the meaning of repentance in the new testament he also hardens he can bring disaster and use evil for his purposes he controls death do these seemingly harsh actions make him ruthless or cruel no as eric little's father said in chariots of fire i think that's a 
true story. I haven't watched it, but it's a, uh, a, a, a check. It's a story of two uh, Amor, British, uh, real life story. They put it into film, who went into British boys who were uh, joined the Olympics. Okay, so it's, uh, I, I guess it must be a very inspiring uh, story called Chariots of Fire, where this, uh, the father said, he is a benign, loving dictator, God. I think it's about God's providence that these two sons were able to go 1980 or something like that. He went into the Olympics and did the nation of Britain proud. Yeah, God is a good God. So in other words, De Young says the power of providence has a benevolent purpose. That means what? Again, he wants to benefit you. Yeah, his providence, his power is to benefit us. Sovereignty, he can do whatever he likes. He is God. Providence is the wisdom and the part of God that loves man and using his sovereignty to benefit man. Right? Main thing is, he didn't send us all to hell. Okay? Yeah, that is the providence of God. He provided the lamb. Remember? Abraham? Yeah? He provided the lamb, same mountain, Mount Moriah. That is the divine providence together with sovereignty. Yeah? He can say, I don't need to send Jesus to come and die for you. God's awesome power is released in awesome love and holiness. God normally works his creation through countless daily acts of providence, orchestrating and ordering events and lives, but sometimes he intervenes through miracles to accomplish his will. So I bring up this story, right, which we are all familiar, having uh, read that, as I pick it out, I think this is a beautiful story that really illustrates God's providence, divine providence, the story of Joseph, right, in the Bible. And uh, that's again one of the last few chapters where everything has already uh, clear now. Okay, so in the beginning, Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold by his brothers as a slave. Okay? Then from the slave, he went to slave in whose house? Potiphar's house. So for how long? Roughly. Okay, uh, I won't go through the verses because it's very long. So roughly, he was in Potiphar's house as a slave for about, then he was sent to prison. So from the time of his being a slave and in Potiphar's house and then go to prison because he was wrongly accused, up to the time he became overseer of Egypt. Now he didn't see all that, right? So remember, his life, if he didn't believe in the sovereign God, he would probably kill himself in the prison or, you know, finish the radio. But you can see he different, right? Stage by stage. So he was 17 years old and 30 years old, he became overseer of Egypt. Uh, yes, you can see in the scripture, I didn't bring out. And then another around nine years where before uh, the father and the family came before him. So this is the last part. So he's probably about uh, 40 to 41 years old. So 13 years of challenges, <laughs> right? Of difficult time, you would say, right? If you want, anyone of you want to <laughs> go through Joseph, right? Go to prison, first a slave, then go to prison. 13 years was his life like that. 17 to 30 years old. Nobody, right? <laughs> so, can we complain? <laughs> But the sovereign God, he said he knows our future, right? He worked all things for our good, for preserving life. So at this point, when the brothers were going to, he, to, he was going to reveal himself to the brothers who sold him. This is what he says. Joseph could not stand it any longer. He was now the overseer. All right, he had already done the keeping of the grain and everything for the seven years. There were many people in the room and he said, 
to his attendants, all out of you, all out, all of you, because his brothers didn't recognize him. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. <clears throat> I am Joseph. Okay, now he is about 40 years old. He said to his brothers, Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. They thought Joseph died already, ma. <laughs> okay, please come closer, or at least he was a slave. He said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. Right, today we see the whole thing. At that time, we cannot see, right? So when we go through difficult times or times that seems to be not what we want, there is a purpose. The sovereign God, the one who is a divine providence, knows what is your future, right? And God's purpose is always to preserve life, okay? He always cares for lives. That's why Jesus came for your life and my life. So he was going to use Joseph, but he didn't tell Joseph exactly that you have to go through this, 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 this before he was to be made finally overseer and able to help the children of Israel because there was a famine, great famine at that time. That's why they all went to Egypt to find food. And then he said, don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. Most people today, you see show, I will kill you. <laughs> you send me, oh, I suffer so much oh, as a slave. Oh, I suffer so much oh, in prison. Now I'm rich already. Oh. <laughs> no, when a person, you and me today, knows our sovereign God and that he's a God of providence, right? We are not afraid of different stages of our lives. We go through just trusting him. That this is a phase that God allows. If God allows me to go through, then I go through. Because there is an ending. And you always see the sovereignty of God. Because he said this, It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your life. So no need to be angry. You didn't send me here. That's how we see life from God's perspective. How you live your life today. right? It is not you who terminated my job boss <laughs> it is god yeah god sent me here it is not you boss i mean of course we don't talk like that to them okay that you know uh, you employ me you think you do me a favor yes of course be grateful right but it is god allowing all these things to happen always see beyond the natural of this human being that human being that that thing that thing when you realize you are a son of God. You are a child of God. And when you see this, you are walking towards your destiny of God's provision and your destiny to fulfill. So Joseph's destiny and purpose was to save, yes, the Jewish people during the time of famine to preserve, to preserve your lives, including his father's life and the brother's lives, right? For the future ahead of them. So who sent him? God. He knows that. Now, who sent you? Ah, each one of you don't say, oh, why my life like this? Huh? You may be at stage one <laughs> okay, of Joseph's life, getting the dream. Wow, the promises of God so good. He got a dream first, right? God gave him fantastic dream. After the fantastic dream, <laughs> toing, we go into the fantastic jail, the fantastic, uh, uh, what do you call, slave, slave life. Yeah, but the ending, good, because all the way he saw this, it was God who sent me here. Each one of us, when we live like that, right, knowing that whichever stage or phase in our life, God is sovereign and God is divine providence. He will provide at each stage. He will grant us the favor because of Jesus Christ. Right? Potipa, he received favor in the slave master's house. 
even though he was a slave. Everything he did prospered. Yeah, but of course, there were more things that he had to go through. Right? Being accused. And one day, he, because of all this, I believe he also treasured life. Right? He treasured life. And he loved the people more genuinely. All right? To be a shepherd, yesterday I shared, right? You have to go through all these challenges, right? How to protect your sheep. How to fight with the bear. And not run away when challenges come. You say, you all take care of yourself. Which mother, real mother or father, tell the children, wow, <laughs> the thief is coming. The robber is coming. You all take care of your Today is uh, Mother's Day. I always forget all these days, right? Because every day to me is your value. All of us are valuable. Whether you are mother, father or what, right? It's good that the world has a day to honour them, but God honours us every day of our lives and wants us to remember that He created you, Talia, for a purpose, yeah? for a very beautiful, divine purpose. Know that He is the one in charge of your life. Okay. The famine had reached the land for two years, will last five more years, and there will be neither ploughing or harvesting. I believe Joseph's heart was very much softened, you know, through what he went through. He know what is suffering. He was in prison. Probably you think prison got a lot of fruitcake and uh, <laughs> delicious food. <laughs> Don't have, right? Probably at times he will suffer some hunger. Yeah, so he knew. That's why he cried when he saw the brothers and he saw God's hand in everything. And he felt for the people, God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. Yeah, the heart of Joseph must have been totally changed by what he went through, right? In the 13 years of hardship, okay? It was to recognize God, right? In his life and God's love for humanity, God's love for the Jewish people. That's why today, going to preach the gospel, it's not you have to. It's when God touches your heart to see that people are dying. And what you are going through is just God molding you, changing you to do His will, to save lives for what Jesus came to do, to save lives, right? So it was God who sent me here, not you. So don't blame your boss. <laughs> don't blame your father, mother, sister, brother, or the enemy, or the friend, or your husband, or wife, for anything bad that happened to you. All right? Whatever bad things happened to me. And I can blame this person, I can blame that person. But when I see that it is God behind everything, what? It is not you, lah. <laughs> you can tell the enemy you think you got power over me you get, let me suffer all this no it was never you God used you actually yeah, to help me grow me into fulfilling his divine purpose God sent me here not you so remember not husband not wife not father not mother not children not boss not enemy your life is under the sovereign God, yeah, the God of providence, who is in control of your life from day one you were born until we go to meet him. He is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh. Ah, don't say, ah, oh, I got promoted. Ah. <laughs> Even the Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. But many times we think we got it ourselves. It's our own ability, yeah? We work so hard, ah. that's why I got promoted, ah. that's why I make so much profit. Ah. That's why Deuteronomy 8.18 says what? God say, when you are rich, when you have come in to live in the houses that you didn't build, when you prosper, don't forget. It is I who gave you the power to get wealth, the koa, the power, the ability to make wealth. And that's why he had to remind because people always forget that God is behind it. All right? 
Then he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace. Wow, look at this. You look at the corporate level, all this. <laughs> wow, I become advisor already to the king, CEO to the owner of this big company. And then, wow, well, manager, man. <laughs> and then I governor, man. But Joseph recognized what? God is the one. Yeah, whichever rank you are, it is God choose so fit to, for you to be in that place. All right, taking that position because he has a purpose. So I saw this, I think bigger and clearer <laughs> for us to see. Big, big. I like everything. Big, big. It was not you who sent me here, but God. Your life will be very different if you realize that. Work, work, move. What wow, their name so difficult? One wrote in you can trust God to write your story. I like this, right? Because at the end, why do we have all this information or about knowledge about God? It's for us to live our lives trusting God to lead us as our shepherd. Then we will not lack, isn't it? So many people lack is because they don't. Really acknowledge Jesus to be their shepherd and their God, right? Because shepherd is the one who leads you the way. Joseph lived a life, a journey with the Lord as his shepherd. Right? Shepherd is always one who shows you the way. <clears throat> so to trust him, our part, and then we can powerfully and confidently say, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack i shall not want even in prison i will not lack even in this situation i will not lack even in whatever i will not lack somehow god will make the way and open the way the hardest part of the story god is writing in your life are not random or meaningless they are full of purpose and in due time all that he has intended for you and for this world will come true whether we believe or not <laughs> but better to believe right and to go on his side yeah then we will be following god's way and god's will in the meantime he will always be with you so we are not finished yet okay there is still the journey to carry on deuteronomy 31 8 do not be afraid or discouraged for the lord will personally go ahead of you he will be with you he will never fail you nor abandon you Right, my verse during my water baptism at age 14 was somewhere in Deuteronomy 31, 6, where don't be afraid or discouraged. God has gone ahead of me. And then now 60 years later, 50 years later, I can see that verse in fulfillment. That no matter what it was, up the hill, down the hill, where he had led me all through, he had gone ahead of me. That today I stand here, in front of you right able to tell you this with all my heart and knowing this is a real true god yeah that you can follow because he has gone ahead of you and he will never leave or abandon you just trust him hebrews 13 5 don't fall in love with money <laughs> Okay, CEV. Don't fall in love with money, okay? Fall in love with a guy, okay? at least not too bad, but he can take your money also. So be very wise. Don't fall in love with money. Be satisfied with what you have. The Lord has promised that he will not leave us or desert us. That is talking about the greed. Lah, okay, so just know that God is with us. Okay, God will go before you, walk beside you, stand behind you. As Jesus said, in Matthew, I am with you always, lo, to the ends of the earth. Yeah, He will never abandon us, the God of sovereignty and God of providence. And the last slide, I saw this, uh, very cute. Uh, at the end, those who walk with God always reach their destination. Yeah, We have a destiny, we have a journey in the year of Pei Gimel to walk. And we started all this journey in Pei Gimel, right, understanding a wonderful journey of where God came and gave us in the Gimel, and we can now give to others. Yeah. So today one is what? Walk, walking in God's providence, God's divine providence, and 
divine destiny, right? So we will definitely reach that destination if you have these revelations in your heart that God is in control and He is good. Okay? Take some time because there's a lot of teaching material inside here. So listen again so that you can really grasp it. The sovereignty, the providence of God and that in the little life that we live here, right? We don't have to worry and worry and go crazy, right? We can trust God as He opens the doors. The next stage is the doors. Dalet. Okay? At first, I totally have no idea what is that. But God spoke to me very clearly last week, I think. Very, very clearly <clears throat> about Dalet, which we are coming into. God's opening doors as we step into, we walk in His destiny, knowing He's in control. There are great doors of opportunities that He's opening for His people here. All right, we're going to walk through the door, and we'll have there'll be more revelation and teaching on that as we move along. Yeah, and actually, uh, just one more minute. When I got this about doors, uh. It was just the Holy Spirit talking to me. So one of the nights after that, I tapped onto one uh, teacher of uh, Hebrew and Hebrew alphabets and 5783 on that. And I was surprised if 5783 haven't reached 5784. There was one particular one that he said, the 5784, which is coming, that God already showed to him, is about open doors. It's about doors. Okay, but doors can be bad, different type of doors. So we have used wisdom. Just don't simply walk any door, right? <laughs> Remember you open wrong door, uh, you can end up uh, a different place, right? So we have the wisdom of God to walk through the door that he opened for us. Okay, and that will be taught later on as we go along. Okay, but look very exciting, the future that God has for us before rapture before jesus come amen okay let's